Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Savannah. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. I tell you, we got a pretty serious show for you guys, but before we get into it, uh, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel and be sure to hit all notifications to be notified the second we drop our content so you don't miss anything whenever we produce it. Let me get into this topic here. Now, this is kind of like an ongoing conversation. People are kind of going back and forth. There's some people that believe that this current NBA product is good. Um, there's some people that believe, no, listen, guys in this era playing defense, uh, it's just that you're not looking at it with the proper lens. And then there are other people at the other end of the spectrum who are like, this era is soft as hell. Uh, the players don't care. It's all about the money. Players b barely make it their business to play all the games on the calendar. Uh, and a lot of people are fed up that these guys don't play defense. So you can see it kind of um, express itself in the uh manifests itself in the in these all-star games where you have the greatest compilation of players and for whatever reason when you put them on the court uh they don't play and the nba fans have been letting the nba know that listen we don't we don't we don't enjoy this product right and ultimately that's the ultimate indictment it's not really what you or i say it's about the people that tune in if you if you have record low numbers and viewership it doesn't matter what i or somebody on the internet is saying the numbers speak for themselves so clearly something needs to change wouldn't you think so if you think that you you have a restaurant and you make burgers and all of a sudden you normally get 100 customers a month and then it drops down to 50 or 30 and you're still talking about, well, my burgers are good. Well, apparently not. Something changed. You need to fix that. And you can't be sitting there arguing, well, people just don't understand the, the you know, the, the ingredients and all of this stuff. They're not biting the burgers the same way. They're not really a pre like, bro, fix the product. Right. Like get out, like get get off the get off the crack pipe and fix the product. And clearly that's what we are. So what happened? Yesterday, I came across a clip from Gail King's and Charles Barkley's show on, uh, what is it, on CNN. I've never watched this segment of that show. I don't watch TV, really, so I don't really watch any of these shows. But I came across a segment from this show, and in the thumbnail, they had a picture of NBA commissioner Adam Silver. And I'm like, Adam Silver? So I click on it to listen to what they were talking about. And to my surprise, Commissioner Adam Silver basically went out there and admitted that the NBA has a real problem with the product and they're, and they're looking at many ways to improve it. So for those of you who didn't hear what he had to say to Charles Barkley, I'm going to play for you now. I'm going to come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to what he had to say here. You know, one of the suggestions, you know, the All-Star game didn't go well. It's been kind of fluid right. the last few years. See, I thought it went well. And then I came back to work that I said, said I thought it was a great time because, you know, I love that event. Charles goes, no, I didn't think it went well. I did. Well, it, it wasn't a plea appeasing to the fans. <laughs> Have you ever considered the United States against the world? <laughs> well, no, it's true. It, it, and speaking of Barcelona, so we thought a lot about that. And I think our feeling going into Indiana for the All-Star game this year, and, and you were obviously both there, was we had one more opportunity to go, in essence, back to basketball, that Larry Bird was sort of our honorary captain. You think of basketball, Larry Bird, Indiana. We'd gone back to the traditional East versus West format. We'd move away from that draft we were doing the last several years. We had done those sort of kind of like special endings. So we went back to 48 minute game. We talked to players before the game and you're right. I mean, I, I had fun. I think fans had fun this who were there weekend. and seeing players. And it was a great weekend, but it wasn't a basketball game. Yeah. And, and had I not seen what happened this year, I think we were ready to do U.S. versus international. I'm just wondering now, and it's a good conversation to have, whether this generation of players, and even and the teams are complicitous too, because nobody wants them to play hard at nobody the All-Star game. Nobody wants them to get hurt. Nobody wants them to get hurt. They see it as a mid-season break. I think of something that was a huge attraction, for example, Sabrina Steph Curry against and Steph. Sabrina. That I was mean, my favorite. That you know, was a highlight. I mean, I mean, it says so much about the game. Yeah. You know, I think of again our generation. You know, Billie Jean King, Bobby Riggs, where it was the battle of the sexes. This was the opposite. This was, as Sabrina said, just two great shooters yeah. out yes. on the floor. So I think maybe as opposed to trying to create a super competitive basketball game, which I'm not sure the teams or the players really want at that moment, say, we should do more fun. It? No, you, well, because... you know, it's interesting. I've talked to, and I'm sure you have too, I talked to a lot of players after the game, and it wasn't, I didn't get the sense that they went out there and said, well, we know what the league wants, and we know they want us to, TNT wants us to play hard, but we're just not going to do it. I think it's just sort of 
Once they got out there, I think particularly the young players, they see it as, again, a mid-season break, an opportunity to have fun, an opportunity to take break from a very long season. I mean, we roughly have 1,300 games over the course of the year, all incredibly competitive games. And I think they see that as something different. They see it, I mean, there's always an entertainment aspect to our league. And I think it shifted from when you were a player. And I, and I think to the point where, when I saw the popularity of Steph versus Sabrina, see what's happening in the women's yes. game, that we should just be looking to do different things and just make it a celebration of basketball. I mean, I, we're going to look at U.S. versus international. I, I just think maybe it, it would pass that point where we're going to play a truly competitive game. And it's, by the way, it's happened in other sports. So you heard what the commissioner um, had to say. Uh, if you listen to him, first of all, uh, Yale King was confusing me with some of the points that she was making because... They were like, yeah, it was a bad product. Everybody agreed. And she was like, well, no, I didn't think so. I'm like, well, apparently you don't really un watch basketball and don't understand the general sentiment of fans. People didn't enjoy it. Um, I feel like she was commenting on that thing and she didn't really understand uh, the subject matter that she was talking about, but just wanted to weigh in, just to weigh in. Um, that's the first thing. Let me get into the second thing. The NBA has an issue that it needs to address. It goes beyond what, to reiterate the point, what I have to say and what other people have to say. People are not tuning in the way that they used to. If you watch the last two All-Star games, no one walked away from that contest and was like, oh, this is a great game. No one. Not even the commissioner of the league. He was embarrassed. And basically what I found out in that soundbite was that Larry Bird was the unofficial captain over the both squads and gave those guys a pep talk about being competitive. And then they went out there and wet the bed. <laughs> if that doesn't, if that doesn't raise <clears throat> um, the alarm bells and we have some real problems, we have some real problems. He spoke about players needing a break and all of that stuff. A long season. Talking about it's a long season. This season has been as long as it's been since for the last, what, 15, 20 years. All of those other guys, their predecessors were still playing the same 82 game season, uh, playing the same, you know, the same 82 games. So how can you be talking about it's a long season when players today load manage and rest more than ever? How is it a longer season when players are playing less today how in the minute they now put in a, a, a policy that would affect their checkbooks now you have everybody all over the internet crying oh this is unfair oh my god this is unfair. because now you're taking money out of this guy's pocket now you're taking money out of that guy's pocket oh my god this is just unfair the unfairness to me oh my lord it's so unfair Ugh, it's so unfair like it's unfair you have guys running around crying all over the internet that the NBA put in uh, a policy to stop the madness that had basically run amok all over the league where teams were sitting down, players and players were sitting down when they were perfectly healthy and the paying customers were the ones to sit there. They, they were the ones that basically were sat there footing the bill for all of this madness. And the minute the NBA says, no, we got to change it. All of a sudden, the players start complaining. You know, the NBA is the only sport. <clears throat> that has athletes that are totally tone deaf to their to the to the pain because i i will never understand it i will never understand it i will never never under who opens a business and doesn't factor in their customers i don't understand it talking about oh they took it away from us my brother let me tell you if you could work six days a week and instead of working those six days, you work four, right? And then the other guy works six days. And then the, the guy at the company says, you know what? I'm noticing that a lot of you guys, some of you guys are working four days. Other guys are working more. So I'm going to do this. Usually I would pay you guys the same salary, right? You would do work and I'll pay you guys the same salary. But I'm coming up with a new system. I'm coming up with a new system. That $10,000 that I used to pay you guys, right? You're only going to be eligible for it if you work at least six days. 
And if you don't work the six days and you're still working four, three, you're not going to get it. Now, imagine the guy that works four days a week crying about, oh, my God, this policy is inhumane. They're taking money away from us. This doesn't make any sense. I mean, come on. I was sick. I had a I had a belly ache that day. I, I couldn't make it. I, I just couldn't make it. Meanwhile, the other guy who's working the six days still goes through life problems and still finds a way to produce. Now, how does it relate to NBA players? In the past, players had issues the same way players have issues today. Players suffered injuries the same way players suffered injuries today. Players still found a way to show up to work. But today, for whatever reason, guys show up less and less, but still want to make more. And then when the NBA says, no, you guys are not showing up enough to qualify for these big awards, which would then boost your contracts, we're taking it away. And now people want to cry. But had you guys not created a problem in the first place, you wouldn't find this is the I don't understand. You create a problem. They put a solution in place to deal with the problem. Then you complain about the solution, forgetting you're the one that created the problem. So we at the new era. These are my thoughts. Whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts in the comments when we catch you on the next show. Peace.